This talk of foreign balloons is bringing back memories. News 8's Jill Lafergi is the story of uh, how a piece of that history ended up in West Michigan. All new at 6. When you get it up, it looks a lot like this. Lawrence Buzz Bailey was just a kid, a nine-year-old, headed to a local sledding hill with two friends when they noticed a large balloon descending over a North Door farm field near the Kent Allegan County line. It was February 23rd, 1945. Yeah, coming down real slow because it was just a little breeze, just on a little angle. It went a half a mile before it hit the ground. Fortunately for Bailey and his friends, the bombs tied to the balloon had exploded before the balloon hit the ground. You could tell by the damage of the balloon that an explosion had taken place. They folded up the balloon and took it to the friend's house. The next day, the government came calling. They took that balloon and you couldn't get one piece of information and they advised everybody do not talk about this balloon at all. Little did Bailey know at the time that he'd stumbled onto a piece of World War II history few know about. The recent Chinese balloon incident is a reminder of that history. We thought of that too. We were talking about that just the other day. The Byron Center Historical Museum was able to find the balloon a few years ago and brought it back to West Michigan. These days, evidence of when the war came to door is now in a large wooden box. They don't take it out much. It takes several people just to unfurl the 30-foot diameter balloon. It's a footnote in the, in the Second World War. Not many people know about it. Ross Cohen, a history professor at the University of Washington, wrote a book on the history of the plan, codenamed Operation Fugo. The Japanese, still dealing with the shock of the Doolittle raid on Tokyo three years earlier, wanted to hit Americans on their own soil. So they devised a plan that would put large, explosive-laden balloons into the jet stream, which would carry them into the skies over the U.S. The Japanese hoped to cause large forest fires in the West and widespread panic across the country. The Japanese hoped that with these balloons silently raining fire from the skies above, that Americans would panic, that the Americans' resolve in the war uh, would be weakened. The problem, the jet stream is strongest in the winter, but the winter also made it too wet to set the fires. About 9,000 of the bombs were launched. Roughly 300 of these balloons arrived in North America during the course of the war. At first, the U.S. government kept the scheme quiet, trying to avoid setting off panic. But after a Sunday school teacher and five children were killed by one of the balloon bombs, the government changed their tactics. Throughout the country, people practice putting out fire bombs. Memories of Operation Fugo have faded over the nearly eight decades since the plan was launched. Last week's shooting down of the Chinese spy balloon has raised interest in that piece of history. But Cohen says while the Chinese balloon may seem like a novel idea, History says otherwise. The use of balloons in warfare and for strategic geopolitical purposes, it goes back to the very invention of lighter-than-air balloons in the 18th century. The folks here at the museum would like to find a permanent spot where the balloon can be displayed. That'll cost money. If you'd like to help out, we have a link to the Historical Museum's website at woodtv.com. In Byron Center, Joe Lafergie, News 8.